Hi everyone, uh, welcome to my new video on my channel, The Cloud Security Guy, in which we talk about things pertaining to cloud security, uh, artificial intelligence, and uh, basically career advice pertaining to cyber security. I wanted to talk about a very important topic today, and it doesn't matter whether you are on the cloud or on-prem, but it is uh, about having a cyber security strategy or roadmap. Uh, it's it's very important topic. Why? Because technology is changing very fast, right? And uh, cyber security teams who don't have a proper roadmap in place, you can face serious problems down the road. So I wanted to give you uh, some recommendations based on my own experience also of creating strategies for more than a decade or so. I've been doing this like on an annual basis, creating strategies and security roadmaps. So by the end of this video, hopefully, uh, you will have all the knowledge you need to develop the foundation of your security strategy whether it doesn't matter whether you're a small business or like a big fortune 500 company on prem or the cloud it doesn't matter these principles which i'm going to talk about uh, you can pretty much apply them to any organization and any type of uh, technology for whatever type of technology footprint that you have okay so let's get started guys before we go ahead guys please do like and subscribe my channel comment on it because that will really help the algorithm and it will help the, this channel to get, gain momentum and move forward and reach more and more people okay so first of all guys let's talk, let's talk about the need for a cyber security strategy so the importance of this step cannot be understated because if if it's not done correctly guys what's going to happen is it can lead to long investments wasted time and potential data breaches down the road okay you're going to be in knee jerk or reactive mode all the time uh, some breach will happen you will focus there some new project will come, you will focus there. Or some new technology will come, which will seem nice, you want to implement it without thinking about where it fits within the business roadmap. That's why you need a proper roadmap in place, okay? So yeah, this is this is basically what it looks like without having a cyber security roadmap. It's like complete confusion, right? You're trying to understand stuff. Uh, you have projects coming up. Uh, you want to focus there. Your, your BAU is there. Apart from that, you have probably risks, uh, audit findings. You have standards to comply with PCI, ISO. You have like cloud security, what to do. So like at that time, while pouring money into things like, you know, monitoring, SOC, multi-factor, security awareness, uh, other things, they, they all have their merits. But a truly secure business, it has to have a sound security strategy in place with a very well-defined roadmap. So you can, it addresses the future requirements and it secures itself also. And you can show it to management and to auditors also. Okay, look, we have, we are following a very proper, uh, what do you call, uh, strategy in place. It's not like just dependent on some people. Okay, so how to create a strategy? So the first thing I want to clear up some misconceptions, your size does not matter. If you're a small company, you're a small startup, right? You're thinking, I don't need a cyber security strategy in place. I only need it if I'm like, I'm a Fortune 500. That That is a very dangerous attitude to have. You realistically need a cyber security strategy always. And I'm going to break it down and make it as simple as possible. And you can change it as you see fit for your organization, or, or, honestly. But I would not recommend skipping any of these steps. So yeah, these are the six steps which I'm talking about. One is the foundation. Uh, what do I have to protect and what do I have to comply with? The second is having a gap analysis, right? Choosing a standard. Uh, having the capability, a very important step which gets missed out by a lot of organizations. Can you actually meet these requirements? Uh, after that is implementing, actually implementing the controls, evaluating, being honest, checking what you did and what you did could not do, okay? And optimizing, getting better, no, no, not making it static. There is uh, there is no, uh, I didn't put a, you, you'll see, I don't, I didn't put a timeline there. There isn't a set time frame that fits all organizations. However, you have to treat it like a project with milestones based on resources, reviews, and other factors, right? That's the only way you will know whether you succeeded or not. And, and we'll see. So like, let's look at each of these steps in details, guys, so we understand what we're talking about, okay? So the first step is foundation. This should be pretty easy to understand. Uh, you should, first of all, uh, you should get the business involved and you should sit them down, ask them, uh, guys, for the next, like, say, 18 months. I, I would not recommend a strategy being more than 18 months, honestly. It can change depending on your nature, but for the next 18 months, what are the big, big business decisions that are going to be happening? So based on that, you will know what's coming up and what you already have, right? You you have to do a, like a quick risk assessment and an uh, asset identity, find out what is there. Don't assume you already know it. Do get the other things involved because it's going to help you find out the type of data that is being generated, what type of systems are there. If you don't value it, it's nearly impossible to prioritize and allocate technology resources where you have a like a limited budget and limited people, right? So you have to find out where you have to be focusing. So identify those assets, 
you, you probably already have like things like tracking technologies, repositories, inventories of servers and systems. And you have to find out what are, so find it out and like find out what are the different, uh, what do you call regulations also, like PCIDSS, the GDPR, where you might get fines if you don't comply with them, right? So make sure these things are there. Don't underestimate this step, guys, because of the current growth at which companies have grown, people are storing data on the cloud, right? Because of the remote working and the pandemic has transferred so many things, the way things are working now, how they're working. VPN has become very common. People are connecting remotely. So many vendors are there. So do, don't assume if you knew how things were like 12 months ago, it's the same. Please do do it because it will really pay off in the long run, okay? Okay, so now you know what to do. The second thing is uh, cyber security strategy. You know, they might differ across companies, uh, even departments, they might have a difference. So it causes a lack of standardization, right? Because you don't know how to, or you might, there's a lack of knowledge also how to do it because, and then you might miss out on how to get things done. That's why I always recommend uh, having like a, making it based on standard, choose a standard, choose NIST, choose ISO, choose CISR. You can choose any other also. It's, it's not an issue because these frameworks, they were designed to give you a proper structure on how to strengthen your cyber defenses, okay? There are multiple frameworks uh, present today that you, they can help you create and support cybersecurity strategy. Uh, but like I said, it gives you a very standardized way of doing it. NIST is very nice. A lot of companies I know, they use NIST. I know a lot of companies use ISO and CIS also. So it really, I, I would, if you're doing it for the first time, I would recommend doing it in NIST. A lot of companies use it when they want to implement like a cybersecurity framework in place. And I, it's a very, very good standard for implementing it. A lot of companies are already certified to ISO, but the scope of ISO is usually limited. Okay, so that's why I would recommend going with the, the, the NIST framework. Okay, and the next step would be, and unfortunately this is a step which gets missed out, right? Uh, guys, can you meet the gaps? Uh, do you have the resources? Do you have the money? Do you have the time? So like if you're a small company, uh, you might be thinking I can't do all this, but that's a very dangerous thing to have because remember, as a small company, you might have data, but you don't have the budget to what you call, like say what a large company might have, right? They have more investment in IT budget to invest in the proper controls. However, do remember that the criminals are also aware of this. Okay, the criminals also know that small companies, they don't have budgets and they will be less protected. So you won't believe in the, if you just Google it, see how many small companies were targeted with ransomware. Because they know, the criminals know they're not, they don't have the top of the line controls. They will come, they will come inside your environment and do it like a ransomware attack. Then you have to play millions of dollars in cryptocurrency just to do it, right? And go with insurances. So the uh, small businesses, they have to deal with tight budgets and resource planning. So you have to make sure you know your capability. If you don't have the money, go to the stakeholders, go to the business and ask for money. Uh, so, and believe me, security is so important. You should be able to get it and get this risk highlighted, right? And a lot of big vendors, you know, they do have options for small businesses. I mean, all the big uh, companies, they do give you options if you're a small business. So you can afford it, right? Apart from money, the most important also thing is resources. Uh, do you have the people to implement it? I mean, uh, what if all your staff are tied up in BAU? What are you going to do then? Well, then you have to look at the option of maybe outsourcing, you know, hiring like a managed security services provider and making sure that you are able to meet these requirements which you're talking about, right? And of course, the time. Uh, don't have unrealistic timelines in place. If you have like, a, if based on your gap analysis, you've identified like, a, I don't know, like a 50 things to do and you're giving them six months. It's not going to happen. The project will fail. So be realistic, find out. And this is a step a lot of people miss and they skip after the gapping, they skip right to the implementation phase. So please do be realistic and find out what you can do, what you can put off based on the risk assessment, okay? Okay, the next step is people probably like this the most where you actually start implementing the projects. I've just made a sample roadmap. You, so based on that, I would recommend if you have a PMO office, you know, project management office, you sync up with them for tracking and metrics. Identify what are your low-hanging fruit, you know, things you can quickly fix. So you, you like quick wins. So, and if you are able to execute those first, what will happen is you'll get more confidence and the business will be happy also because you can show, look, I've already done X, Y, Z. Now I'm moving on to the big projects. So you will continue to you can move on to the more strategic projects, but identify what are tactical things you can do quickly within like a month or three months. That will really, uh, what do you call, pay off in the long run, okay? So this is where you start implementing your security strategy. This might go on for six months. Uh, no, not six months, definitely. Sorry, 12 months, 18 months. 
and based on that you should start seeing improvement within your organization and like you see it's happening in a structured way okay okay and this is the thing uh, part which people do not like which is called the evaluation phase right this is where you have to be honest guys and uh, you have to find out how much after let's say every six months you should do an evaluation how much did you achieve like were your targets realistic right uh, you can do this yourself or you can have your PM office or your audit uh, people do it, right? And sometimes, right, a lot of, uh, uh, there are a lot of reasons for failure, right? You might have budget problems. I mean, you might spend like $100,000. Yeah, that might be the requirement, but you don't get that budget, right? And implementation can range from 10 to thousands of uh, like dollars over two to three years, right? So this uh, that's why it's so important to have this right at the start. You might unfortunately get politics involved. People might not want it. And you know, these things always happen. So realistically, you might not be able to implement a lot of stuff. Your staff might leave. So you might have people you are depending on and they get better offers and they move on. That's why it's so important to take care of your staff, right? So, and that might lead the project to fail. And your business plans might change. So what happened? Your business priorities might change. The business might suddenly decide to go into a new geography. They might decide to merge with another company. So that might completely change it. That's out of your control. That's why it's so important to sync with the business right at the start, right? And so you have to set realistic timelines. You have to get make sure everybody is involved in it. If you set too aggressive a timeline, it, it, it will be unrealistic and it won't be like you won't be able to achieve it, right? So these are all the things you have to and keep on evaluating. And based on that, you can improve it, okay? Which leads us to the last point, which is improving. So you have stakeholders, right? When stakeholders understand that you're making decisions, and what do you call, you have to show that, okay, you're improving upon them, right? Based on the feedback that you get, based on your success stories and all that, you have to repeat having a cyber security strategy. I would recommend a cyber security strategy should not exceed more than 18 months because honestly, technology changes so fast. We have so many attacks coming in. You have to keep on improving it. But after that, do see, and then repeat this whole process, which I talked about. Over time, you will see yourself getting better and better over this. Your organization's maturity will increase you'll get better at NIST, better at CIS, better at ISO, and you'll be able to know who to contact, how to do it. But if you have not done it, then initially it's a bit challenging, but definitely it pays off. So guys, this is uh, what you call, these are my tips for uh, how to implement like a cybersecurity strategy. I, like I said, I did not put a timeline because there is no timeline that fits all organizations. It should, But you should treat it as a project with milestones based on resources, risk assessment, uh, reviews, technologies, and other factors which are related to the project. Uh, start off with this uh, and uh, let me know how you do along. Uh, okay, so we should end of this video, guys. Please do like and subscribe this channel. Do comment on it if you feel I was not realistic or if you felt I missed something which I should have discussed. And I'll uh, definitely, I'm happy to be corrected if you feel I made a mistake or somewhere like that. Okay, guys, thank you very much. And I'll see you in the next video.